home, wherever ever they decide, when they sit, when we get done doing whatever whatever we do, and they think misinformation and lies put out about our speakers. They're going to come up at 10,000 feet, and they're going to go, it's going to go right there. It isn't going to matter. Only because, and how do they get yes. to have that kind of power? They don't. They, yes. they contracted it. We all know this is not going to happen. Are we going to let this happen? No! massive construction throughout the whole park and that's going to limit access and cause irrevocable damage to the environment. We're gonna save Zilker Park. We're gonna save Zilker Park. I first heard about the Zilker Vision Plan while out one day at Barton Springs Pool. By the entrance there was a table with a sign that read Save Zilker. Curious to learn more, I started chatting with the woman behind the table. The city has been working with a design consultant to create a vision plan for Zilker Park. And they've been doing some community outreach, but really it hasn't reached very far. A lot of people have not been knowing about this. And this is supposed to be a 50 year vision plan. In the vision plan, um, it says that the planners would like to see a unified nonprofit partner for Zilker Park. Um, that was never discussed in the community outreach. So while the city claims these nonprofits wouldn't be able to run the park, uh, relying on private organizations to fundraise for a park instead of public sources is dangerous for a whole bunch of reasons. The nonprofits, uh, they have private boards. They're not required to be transparent in the same way that like a city parks department has oversight. These nonprofits, they can be short-sighted in pursuing their interests um, of like their individual organizations. So for instance, like the Austin Parks Foundation, they're funded by ACL. Um, it's a huge conflict of interest. And then the construction projects like the parking garages and the giant amphitheater on the Great Lawn, um, they just open a way for Zilker to be exploited as a venue and to make money rather than stay a park, be a park for the public to enjoy. So essentially what's happening, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, the city is proposing these changes, but the reason they're proposing these changes is anything but clear because there's a lot of money in making venue spaces, making parking garages, making more vendor stalls and all these things that basically turn a park, turn the nature areas into adult Disneyland, right? Now, overall, the vision plan needs to be returned to the interest of what the people of Austin mostly need, and that is a respite from their hectic day-to-day -day lives out in the real world. After talking with Terry for a bit, I signed up for her newsletter and forgot about the whole thing. That was until a few months later when I got invited to join her on a walk and talk, which was hosted by city council members in an attempt to answer the public's questions. So on a whim, I decided to attend. So now we're here under the Mopac Bridge um, in the Stratford parking under Mopac. And um, he, I don't think, knows what he's doing right now. This, right, what we're standing on, yes, is part of the total, and I don't know about a dollar number, but this is well, going to enough, cost that's some... That's the number that's been floating around. Okay, well, it, it, this will cost something to turn into the great space. So, um, Mayor Pro Tem is here as well. Yeah. I don't know if you want to yeah. be, a, be a participant or a, a spectator, it's up to her. Uh, <laughs> After 20 minutes of standing around in the sun, I realized there was a lot of talking going on and not a lot of answers coming from the main speaker. Most of the attendees were outspoken against the Zilker vision plan. We are having, I believe, a lot of distrust in what to permanently do here. I would like to have a park, not an entertainment venue. We have plenty of theaters, plenty of restaurants, plenty of bars. We don't need more of that in Zilker Park. But there was also a fair amount of vision plan sympathizers. The staging area is going to go wherever they decide. When they sit, when we get to 10,000 feet, and they're going to go, it's going to go right there. And it isn't going to matter. Only because, and how do they get yes. to have that kind of power? They don't. They, they contracted it. Part of the contract. So what I, the, what I will, the context I'll add to this is, as we make some of the changes that we're going to make in the park, it is going to changes to things Absolutely. like what ACL, you know, how they stage or whatnot, of and that is going to be, uh, it, it will be incumbent upon Pard 
and you know the individuals involved there to come up with a responsible plan. And you know, I don't know what that plan's going to be. Although it's called the Zilker Vision Plan, I didn't see much of a vision presented from our nearly three hour long excursion of the Zilker parking lot. Shortly after the walk and talk, Terry told me there was another filmmaker covering the topic and she was planning to make a documentary about Zilker. So I met with the filmmaker, Elisabetta, and we quickly started to come up with a vision plan of our own. We were going to put on a concert to protest the city's plans to develop and remodel this treasured park, but we had to act fast as the park board's big decision was less than a week away. I knew the first and only thing that mattered was having the artists, because if we had them, the rest would follow. If I make one person feel good when I'm playing, then I've done something good. Luckily, I knew several in town, including my friend Bruce, who offered us his generator. Joining him would be local Austin musicians Zach and Nate Zivin, my roommate Ulysses, who's a blues player, and punk rocker Negative XP. It seemed overwhelming at first, but everyone pitched in a little bit, and before we knew it, things just came together. In the famous words of Betta, just take it day by day. And so we did. I have been a member of Austin for all of my life, and to see Zilker Park go to these horrible, horrible parking garages and turn that turn into that is just god awful to me. But anyway, my name is Zach. This is Ulysses. Hi, this is me. How are you? I'm so well. More than a few people stopped to listen and dance to the music. But more importantly, we made a few people more aware about what was going on with the park they loved. This place has an special vibe, you know. So I've heard that phrase about things can, can be better all the time. But you know, I think that this is perfect as, as is. And let's keep it natural. Nobody wants this. Like... 80 something percent of Austinites have said, we like the park the way it is. We just want you to fix the stuff that's broken. We didn't have the largest event or big ticket sales or even a stage, but on that day, we all gathered to celebrate the true spirit of Zilker. Zilker is more than a designated green space or just a nice looking park. It's a place that gives us the space to gather, play, laugh, and relax in the calm serenity of nature. It's a fundamental part of what makes life beautiful. Betta and I were feeling optimistic about the event, but we were unsure of the park's future, and we knew the next day would be pivotal for that future. Hey, we just wanted to remind you that tomorrow is the Parks Board meeting. Um, it's at 6 o'clock, it's at City Hall. I was expecting a calm, quiet boardroom meeting, but with the amount of people that showed up and with how much they rallied against the plan, it seemed like the start of a citywide protest. The vast majority of speakers were against the plan, but there were also a few pro vision planners, and they were not well received. And there really are often loud voices that oppose change, but we should not let the nostalgic preference for what Austin used to be. Uh -huh. Be respectful. I try to be nice about this at the very beginning. 
I was there for a couple hours and there were still nearly 100 people left to speak on the docket. The hearing lasted from 6 p.m. to 1 a.m. and by the end of the night, it became clear this wasn't just a fight for Zilker Park, it was a fight for the soul of Austin. We even have a video that I'm waiting for. Well, this, this is 12 feet underwater for, in Barton Springs. A, a previous woman said that the Springs doesn't have a voice, but this is really it. And I think many would agree that this is symbolically representative of the energy that that park represents. The, what you're talking about, this area you're talking about, is the heart of Austin. Energy. Yeah. Yeah. By the end of the night, it seemed like the will of the people had spoken, and their answer to the vision plan was a resounding no. The next day, we got the news. We're taking a vote now. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. Seven to three, the motion passes. Parks and Rec Department is clearing the way for improvements to Zilker Park. The last night, the board voted to approve the Zilker Park vision plan, but they did not do it until they heard from dozens of people about what they thought about it. KBU's Dominic Newland joins us now live in studio with a recap of what both sides had to say. A lot of passion on both sides, Dominic. Love to see that. The result was disappointing to hear, but the massive turnout gave us hope for the future. The final vote is coming on July 20th. That's when the city council will decide on the fate of Zilker Park. And if we could get this many people rallied for Zilker by word of mouth, just imagine what we could do with a viral video. Fingers crossed. If you enjoy this video and the artists that were performing in it, I'll be uploading their full sets from the Save Zilker event onto my channel Lightwave. And if you want to support more videos like this, as well as gain access to exclusive behind the scenes and outtakes of this video, you can join my Patreon and help me out with just a few dollars a month. Special thanks to everyone involved with the event and especially Elisabetta who made this video possible. Much of the footage you saw here will be coming to a full documentary that she'll be putting out later this year. So look out for that. Thanks for watching and enjoy Zilker while you can. The plan includes more parking garages, pedestrian bridges, and some changes to Barton Springs Road. It's designed to protect the green space and accommodate Austin's growing population. But people said the plan it needs heavy edits. A lot of people also spoke about a rumor that the city was planning to um, use a private owner for that park. The city clarified last week it was not going to be selling any part of the park to a private company, and the Austin Parks and Rec Department will keep control of it.